So um, we've recently published a report called Carbon Countdown, Prices and Politics in the EU ETS. This is a very topical subject at the moment. The European carbon market is the best performing commodity market anywhere in the world over the last 18 months. Prices have risen 400% nearly uh, from trough to peak over the last 18 months. And the reason for that is we've had a very far reaching political reform of the market, which will take effect from January next year, and which will lead to a very significant uh, supply squeeze. And obviously, Economics 101 tells you that when you have a supply squeeze and demand remains the same, and we have no reason to think that demand is, is going to be different from uh, what it would have been in the absence of this reform, then other things being equal, that leads to a price increase. Uh, we're expecting the prices uh, to continue rising as that supply squeeze actually starts to bite from January next year. Um, so as a result of all that, we've ended up with a very large oversupply of allowances in the market, 1.7 billion tonnes of oversupply, and the market stability reserve is designed to reduce that supply, removing a very significant number of allowances from the market every year for the next four or five years, um, equivalent to 24% of the total outstanding surplus in the market every year for the next five years. Fuel switching is quite simply substituting one fuel uh, for the uh, generation of, of electricity with another, specifically in this context, a less carbon intensive fuel for a more carbon intensive fuel, gas instead of coal. Gas, when it is burned for power generation, gas generally uh, produces only 50% of the amount of emissions that an equivalent coal-fired power plant would produce. So the power sector is the single largest most important sector in the EU ETS. It accounts for about 50% of all emissions in the scheme and therefore reducing emissions in the power sector via fuel switching is the easiest and largest scale way of reducing emissions in the short term. The point is you need a carbon price that makes gas competitive with coal. We estimate that if you limit it to 45% um, efficient gas plants displacing 38% efficient coal plants, you can reduce emissions by about 60 million tonnes per year throughout Europe. We think, though, that would require a carbon price of between 35 and 40 euros a tonne based on current coal and gas prices in the future. Obviously, for that to happen, you need um, uh, countries that have both coal and gas-fired generation capacity. There are five countries in Europe that have a significant amount of coal and a significant, significant amount of gas. That's the UK, Germany, Italy, Spain and the Netherlands. In the UK, however, because the UK has had a higher carbon price, in addition to the European carbon price, the UK has had a domestic top-up price for carbon and that has meant that it's been much more expensive for coal-fired generators already over the last three years. So what you've actually seen in the UK experience over the last three years is a huge reduction in coal-fired generation and, and, and almost all of the fuel switching that can happen in the UK has already happened. So a higher carbon price won't change things in the UK. We've already maxed out in terms of fuel switching. So the markets we're looking at now are Germany, Italy, Spain and the Netherlands and Germany has the largest amount of spare gas capacity available, but also has the lowest efficiency rates for gas, which means other things being equal, you will need a higher price in Germany to incentivize a fuel switch uh, than you will, for example, in Spain, which has a very efficient uh, gas-fired uh, power fleet. So it all comes down to that mix of efficiency and spare capacity. The European Union will have to revisit and tighten its long-term emissions reduction targets to be compliant with Paris. And other things being equal, that would require a tightening of the EU ETS as well. Um, we uh, analysed this question in a previous report called Carbon Clampdown back in April. And we arrived at the conclusion that in order for the EU ETS to be tightened sufficiently to make uh, 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 its contribution to a uh, Paris uh, compliant European target, um, you would probably need an extra 1.5 billion tonnes of reduction cumulatively between 2021 and 2030, and that would require prices higher still. You'd probably be looking at prices of 60, even 70 euros a tonne for compliance by 2030 with um, the ultimate objective of the Paris Agreement.